when you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality. Who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV. On this day, before the 70th anniversary of D-Day, we're going to commemorate and honor those who came before us, the Buffalo Soldiers, an event taking place this coming weekend. You can call in our program at 436-MEET-TV, option 11. Do turn down the sound. We are live here at Ventura TV. Of course, we're coming to you live on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this day. This, the day before D-Day, the 70th anniversary, a special show tomorrow with a World War II uh, veteran coming into our studio. And today, we're going to have a special program as well. And you can call in at 436-MEET-TV, option 11, because right now, between 1030 and 11, we are live. And posing a question to all of you folks out there, Many of you might know this, but do you know who guarded our national parks prior to 1916? I know that some of you know the answer to that question, maybe not all of you. That's when the National Park Service came into play and the park rangers took over those duties. But prior to 1916, who guarded those national parks, you ask? It was the Buffalo Soldiers, my friends. The Buffalo Soldiers served as the park rangers from 1891 all the way through 1916. Now keep in mind, three of those years, 1899, 1903, and 1904, 500 African-American Buffalo soldiers served as the park rangers at Yosemite, Sequoia, and Kings Canyon National Parks. It was roughly during that time also that they traveled from San Francisco and or Monterey, if you will, some 300 miles or so to Sequoia National Park, stopping along the way in places like Los Banos, Fireball, Madera, and yes, even Fresno. That's not every stop, but they actually camped out here in Fresno at Courthouse Park. This, my friends, look at this. This is rare video, video, black and white, of course, shot in 1903 in San Francisco where the Buffalo Soldiers escorted President Teddy Roosevelt through the downtown area. And you can see the president inside the carriage there. He'll come up close to your screen. This weekend, their long journey to Sequoia will be retraced. There's Teddy Roosevelt right there. Live in our studio now to talk about the event is Geneva Brett. She is the Los Banos uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, person who has come into our studio today and a local organizing committee for the Buffalo Soldiers uh, Day. And we're going to talk to her about the Buffalo Soldiers retracing their events uh, this coming weekend that took place more than a century ago uh, right here in the Central Valley. From the Bay Area, from Monterey all the way to here, how did they do that? Your phone calls are more than welcome. 436 Me TV, option 11. Do turn down the sound. We've got our guest waiting here in the studio for your phone calls and much more. We're back in just a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Whirlpool appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Touch the new Whirlpool Ice Collection. It offers a modern style made to create an inspiring kitchen experience. Save big on this Whirlpool Black Ice or White Ice Kitchen. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. 
you know, this is a project that um, Geneva Brett has been working on for a long, long time. Many months, perhaps many, even many years. I don't know. We'll get into that in just a moment. But I want to push the phone number, 436-MeTV, Option 11. We're here live. You can call in and ask about this event, uh, retracing the steps of the Buffalo Soldiers, of course, this weekend. And you are the president of the Los Banos Chamber of Commerce, right? I, I am. Yes, yeah. I am. Yeah, so long drive up here this morning? About an hour and a half. We took yeah. the long cut instead of the short right. cut. You didn't hitchhike or walk? No, we didn't. Or you didn't, you, not we did, on horseback? Not on horseback, not on horseback. <laughs> we thought the comfort of our Mayor Pro Tem's car was quite nice. Yes. Is that right? So mention their names because they're here. They're oh, here. Yeah, okay, mention their names. The local organizing committee is our Mayor Pro Tem, Deborah Lewis, and Pastor Bruce Rivers and myself. And they're standing right over there, and we appreciate you being here. But see, you know, they were both shy. They didn't want to come on camera. I Why? know. Why? I, I don't know. I like to talk more than them. How long have you been working on this project? Seven years. That's a long time. It's a long time. It's really exciting that it's coming to fruition right now. It's really exciting. So, okay, you're going to retrace the events. How is that going to happen? How are you going to retrace the the footsteps or, <laughs> should I say, the horseback steps uh, that took place more than a century ago with the Buffalo Soldiers? There's a group coming out of the Presidio of San Francisco. This Our event in Los Banos is part of a bigger event, African American National Parks event. So there will be two tour, three tour buses leaving the Presidio of San Francisco Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, heading to Yosemite National Park, and they'll be stopping in Los Banos for lunch. So they're, this year, the only stop in retracing the trail is in Los Banos, and this is building up for 2016, which is a National Park Centennial. Yeah, that's that's marks a hundred years that the park rangers actually took over guarding the national parks, and uh, of course that's a long that's that's about the time I was born around 1916. Mm. Feels like it sometimes. Um, joke there. Uh, <laughs> I got that. <laughs> I got that. So so who's whose idea was this to put this event together, and and how long did it take to organize it? We talked of this retracing. It, that's been in, the, in discussion for five or six years. But this this is the second time you've done it. This is the first, first time. First time, okay. It's the second annual African American National Parks event, and that gotcha. was created okay. by Teresa Baker, a woman from Richmond, California, who grew up with eight brothers and decided she wasn't being left out of anything. If they play football, she played football. They camp, she camp, and she learned to love camping in our national parks. But when she was going to the park, she realized not very many people look like her. She's African American and so she wanted to do something to get folks out into the parks. You know what I like to do? I like to replay that video that we showed in the monologue. Okay. Um, interesting stuff. 1903 prior to the San Francisco earthquake. Look at this video. I mean you know you expect it to be grainy. I mean what do you expect? This was 1903 for God's sake. We can't mm -hmm. see too much detail in this in this video but this is downtown San Francisco and the Buffalo Soldiers are actually escorting the President of the United States, Teddy Roosevelt, by horseback, of course. He's in the carriage there. Were these African-American Buffalo Soldiers here? They were. Yeah. And it was quite unusual. This is supposed to be the first video footage of President Roosevelt, mm -hmm. as well as he asked them to escort him in honor of their work with him on the Battle of San Juan Hill. We all okay. know that story, but what is little known about okay. it is that the Buffalo Soldiers were there and pretty much saved his bacon, so to speak. Yeah, I just want to, you know, I, I, and the original members of the uh, Buffalo Soldiers, this, they were formed in 1866 in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. The nickname given to them uh, to the African-American soldiers by Native American tribes that they were fighting against. Is right. that correct? That is correct. Expand on that a little bit. Well, the... Sorry, <laughs> little little space there. So what happened was the Native Americans were just awed by the Buffalo Soldiers, by these African American cavalrymen and infantry men. Right. infantrymen about they were fierce warriors so they named them buffalo soldiers in part because of that they revered the buffalo and they thought the hair between the buffalo sh the horns resembled that of the um, African American cavalrymen, and so that's a, that's how the uh, the soldiers got their name. That's Buffalo. how they got their from names from the Native Americans. From the they Native were fighting. Fighting. exactly. But they respected them, and it was really hard for them. They didn't fight the African Americans unless they had to. They would fight the white troops, but they saw a kinship between the two because the African Americans had been fighting for their own freedom. Yeah. Okay. So the regiments that uh, we're talking about here: the Ninth Cavalry, the Tenth, the Twenty Fourth, and the Twenty Fifth. Yes, those were the Buffalo Soldiers. What was the significance of um, 
the events that are taking place this weekend. Why did they make the trek from the Presidio in San Francisco and Monterey through the Central Valley to Sequoia. What, what was the significance of that, and why did they do that? It was only the 9th Cavalry and the 24th Infantry, and it was the Army's responsibility to care for our national parks before the national park came so into being. they were being. going to Sequoia to guard Sequoia to guard, National Park. That is correct. Against poachers, job. against poacher, poachers, they were, and against uh, people <laughs> taking timber. And it was also the responsibility to build roads to make access for the public, and this was in a time when the general public didn't even understand what a national park was. Yeah, and that was what year? What 1899, year 1903, 1904 were the so years of the Buffalo. Yeah, but 1890, but the, the, the date of this trek took place when? It took place three different years of the Buffalo Soldiers the that they did. But the first trek was when? Of the Buffalo Soldiers, it was in May of 1899 that they went from, from the San Francisco to Sequoia. To Sequoia. That was the first. 13 okay. stops. So that's what we're celebrating this weekend. Right. That's what we're retracing that trail and honoring those 500 men that served in the national parks in those three years. Okay, 436 Me TV Option 11, talking about the Buffalo Soldiers that came through central Fresno here. What, at Courthouse Park? They camped out over there for a while? They did. Yeah, overnight? Overnight, they camped in these. It, it was a long journey. Well, it wasn't called Courthouse Park back then, but we knew it as Courthouse Park we, now. Yes, exactly. And, you know, I have newspaper reports of some of these things, of reports, newspapers here in Fresno, in Sanger, in Madera, Los Banos, San Jose, all along the trail. Yeah. We do have a phone call. Let's take it here real quick. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. What's your question? Well, correct me if I got my dates wrong. In, in uh, uh, 1492, the Dark Age landed in America, okay? In 1850, the Dark Age consumed California. And so is this a Dark Age celebration? That's my question. I don't understand the question. Sorry. I don't either. Uh, we, is he still there? Is he gone? Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure what the question was, but it um, has something to do with the, the, dark, the dark age. What's the dark? I don't know. You know what? We need to move on and take a break. How about if we, we do that? That sounds good. I like All that right. idea. Geneva Brett is here talking about the Buffalo Soldiers. You know, I didn't get that question. I don't know if you did. 436, Me TV Option 11. Do call in. We're talking about specifically about the Buffalo Soldiers trek from the Bay Area and Monterey over to the Sequoia National Park that took place in 1899, retracing those events this weekend. 436, Me TV Option 11. Call in and ask your question. When you're looking for KitchenAid innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified KitchenAid appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. You can call in and ask your question about the Buffalo Soldiers and retracing their events from 1899 this uh, coming weekend. They're going to do that in uh, 436 MeTV Option 11. Talking to Geneva Brett, she's the president of the Los Banos uh, Chamber of Commerce. She's been working on this inaugural event, I guess you could call it, uh, for the last uh, seven years or so. And so finally this weekend it all comes to pass. And another piece of videotape that we have, I guess we have one more piece of videotape. Is this from 1903? I guess it is, yeah. And uh, the streets of downtown San Francisco. And I just want to say about the Buffalo Soldiers, um, we do have another phone call. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yes. Yeah, yeah. um, let's see. Uh, John, and to your guest. Yes, go ahead. Is there people that are related right now or living that were related to the Buffalo Soldiers is living possibly in Fresno? It could be possible. We have a list of all the soldiers who served, the 500 soldiers who served in the national parks in those three years. We have folks in Los Banos who remember some of those soldiers. Okay, are they going to be there for the ceremony? Is that a ceremony? Uh, maybe I'm a little vague. I didn't get the whole story. Yeah, is in other words, is, is there going to be a ceremony here in Fresno? Is that what you're asking? Uh, yes, and up there in Yosemite. 
or, or Sequoia. Sequoia. There will be a ceremony in, at the Presidio of San Francisco. There not will, here. Uh, not in Fresno. That's going to be up to Fresno for 2016 and 2015, but not but Fresno. not this year. Not this year. In Los Banos, we're honoring the man, the Buffalo Soldier, who came to live in Los Banos, and all of them in general. You're invited to Los Banos. We do have a website. Is there going to be a ceremony at Sequoia? Not this year. This year it's the okay. Presidio of San Francisco to Yosemite. Next year we're hoping to have the Presidio of Monterey to Sequoia. Okay. So this one, this, this retracing uh, goes to Yosemite this year? Correct. Okay. Not to Sequoia. Not okay. to Sequoia. Gotcha. Okay. Let's put up some photos. I don't know what we're going to take a look at here, but we have so many photos uh, that date back a long time. There's one here. Now keep in mind from 1866 to the 1890s, the Buffalo Soldiers served at a variety of posts in the southwestern portion of our country, as well as the Great Plains. That's true. This history we're talking about is very little known, these 500 men. And that photo that we're looking at right now on 500 the, African five, Americans. 500 African Americans okay. who have waited 100 years for recognition, and that's what we're doing Why now. Why haven't they gotten it? It was just little known. This just kind of slipped through the cracks, and if it weren't for Ranger Shelton Johnson at Yosemite, who saw this photo you're looking at right now, who knows it, when it would have come to light. So this is 1899. This is the 24th Infantry in Yosemite in 1899. Yeah, and just giving a little history before I take the phone call, too, the Buffalo Soldiers also served in the Spanish-American War, some 5,000 uh, from regiments, uh, uh, you know, taking part in other wars as well. We'll mention those as the program goes on. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Wow, that's some great footage you're showing of President Roosevelt visiting the West Coast. I guess that's the same trip. I wanted to ask your guest, when the president met with John Muir and the famous picture of the two of them standing at, uh, I think it's at, uh, gosh, I don't know, Half Dome or something, looking out over the valley, is that the same trip? And the president was out here. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Pretty it was. Cool. I think it was. Yeah. What's your question? What's your question? Oh, uh, my question. My question is: the Buffalo Soldiers, did they fight in the war too? The uh, I know the Spanish American War. The uh, your guest was talking about San Juan Hill. What about subsequent uh, uh, conflicts that the country's been involved in? The Buffalo Soldiers stay as a cohesive unit in the infantry. Did they go on to other victories, like I don't know, Korea or, or maybe World War Two? That's my question. Yes, they did. African Americans have served in every military conflict in our country since the Revolution. As the segregated units, they served um, Spanish-American War, the Philippine Insurrection, the Indian Wars, and they did serve until in their own segregated units until the Army was desegregated. Well, they also took part in the Mexican Expedition, uh, World War I uh, fights there, and the last uh, Indian War, which took place in this country in 1918, the Battle of Bear Valley that took place in Arizona. That is a rare photo right there. Let's think it about it just for a minute. Look at that photo. Did you see that photo? I saw that photo, and that is the 24th Infantry laying by a roadside in the Philippines where they had just been attacked. Mm. We don't know if the guy that lived in Los Banos, Private Jim Hall, is one of those men. Yeah, that's the Philippine-American War. There's another uh, dramatic picture of a war here. Which one is this one here? That is not a war. That is the presidential okay. uh, presidential escort in San Francisco, 1903. Okay. Okay. Same one. That's, okay. that's a still. So, okay. All that's right. a still. That's a still shot of the video that we just saw. Right. That almost looks like a wartime picture, doesn't it? To right. a certain extent. Right. How about this one here? That is the 9th Cavalry in Sequoia. Okay. What year is that? That is 1903. All right. A little more information about what this photo is about? They just posed for that photo. We don't. There isn't a lot of information about these photos. The absolute best information on this can be obtained through the National Park Service. Okay. All right. Do you have any more photos up there that we can show? Go ahead and change it. No. That's it? Do you have any of Colonel Young? Yeah. I believe we do. That's Charles Young right there. He's a soldier, 9th Cavalry, Sequoia National Park, 1903. That's him on the left there, right? He was. It is. He was yeah, amazing. Go back to the other photo if we could. That is Colonel Charles Young. He was yeah, the third. The other photo. There you go. Right there. Right there. 
Um, he was the third African American to graduate West Point. He was the first national uh, superintendent of a national park, which was Sequoia in 1903. He was the first military attache. He was a remarkable man, spoke multiple languages, and mm -hmm. played multiple instruments, and was just heralded as a leader by both his white officers as well as his African American uh, yeah. cavalrymen. Now, I read somewhere that Charles Young um, named a giant sequoia. Booker T. Washington, is that true? That is true. The people wanted to name one after Colonel Young. He and his men in 1903 did more at Sequoia in one summer than the previous three superintendent, superintendents did in three years. So uh, does he have a tree named after him at Sequoia as well now? He does. There is a Colonel Young tree. <laughs> there is. Have there is. <laughs> I have not seen it yet. I've seen That's his grave amazing. in Arlington. Now, do, oh, you have seen his I, grave. I've been to his grave in Arlington. In Arlington in 2010, we were went to Congress to test for Buffalo Soldiers in the National Park Study Act. Is that his grave That there? was his grave in Arlington. Wow. And his, his funeral service is one of ten that were ever held in the amphitheater at Arlington National Cemetery. He is a, he's almost like a, a, uh, a giant sized figure, a bigger than life figure in his time period, is he not? He is. Why? He was remarkable. When you think about how challenging it was for African Americans in those yeah. days, oh, yeah. he said that his, about his time at West Point, he wouldn't wish that on his worst enemy. Yeah. It was pretty tough, and yet... Was he, he tall, a tall man? Was he big in stature? Or? He, I don't believe he was. I'm, I don't even think he was six foot, so I don't know, you know, that's... But he was a bigger-than-life figure during that time. He was a bigger-than-life figure. He yeah. was about education and arts and respect and teaching African Americans. A lot of them were former slaves and didn't even know how to read. Yeah, and this guy was very well educated, spoke several languages, as you mentioned, and uh, does he have any living relatives here now? He does. Actually, I believe he has relatives in California as well. He came from Ripley, Ohio, and has relatives back there. We're hoping that some of them will come on this journey to Yosemite National Park. Yes, too bad we don't know more about him because he's a very interesting figure during that time period. Yes. Uh, we're talking with Geneva Brett. She is the president of the Chamber of Commerce in Los Banos. And by the way, the retracing of those events that takes place uh, this coming weekend, they'll be passing through Fresno. The Buffalo Soldiers. Uh, any more phone calls? Any more questions? 436 Me TV Option 11. We're back with our remaining moments here on the program in just a moment. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. When you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Fascinated today about the uh, the Buffalo Soldiers and retracing their events of the early uh, 1900s, uh, pre-1900, as a matter of fact, for about three or four years there. Geneva Brett, um, we're going to put some more photos up on the screen, and you can just walk us through what we're looking at. So okay. they're not going to be in any particular order. What are we looking at here? We're looking at an aerial of Los Banos. You see that rectangle on the left side of the screen? That's the racetrack, Los Banos racetrack, race where the Buffalo Soldiers camped in those three years we mentioned. Okay. It's on Mercy Springs and Overland. All right. And we're hoping... How about this one here? Um, this is Charles Young and his road crew at Sequoia National Park in 1903. Wow, look yeah. at that photo. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, do we see Young in this photo here anywhere? Is we he... do. He is the fifth one from the left. Top row? Uh, no, bottom row. Bottom row. So the bottom row, one, two, three, three four, four, five. five. And there yes. he is right in the middle there. Right huh? in the middle Sitting there. Sitting down. Sitting down. He was the captain. 
Well, he rested every once in a while. Okay. Yeah. All right. No problem. There's another photo here. Is that your car there? No. Nope, that's well. That was my first car. But <laughs> that is actually Private Jim Hall's house where he lived on Sixth and K Streets in Los Banos. Explain who Private Hall was. Private Hall was with the 24th Infantry in 1899 when they came through Los Banos. Something about the town. He spent one night there, and our voter records in 1905 show he came back to live there until he died in 1955. So he is our Buffalo Soldier. Yeah, from Los Banos. From Los Banos, and there's okay. one of the voter registrations. And by the way, our show goes into Los Banos now. You can you watch our show, don't you? I do watch your yeah. show. All right, here we go. That is the, uh, his divorce, when he filed for divorce, which was pretty unusual in 1933, and there is his obituary as well. Yeah, divorce that's, rate. Yeah, that's his. That's his grave, right? That's his grave. We'll be doing a wreath laying ceremony there at 11:30 on Saturday morning. And that's in Los Banos. At right? the Los Banos Cemetery, yes. Okay, and um, what are we looking at here? What we're looking at is uh, um, Congressman Raúl Grijalva and members of the former Los Banos Buffalo Soldiers Association. Congressman and is in the blue shirt. He is in the blue shirt. And you are on the far right. I there. am the only woman in the picture, so I that's see. kind of easy. And I this see. was in uh, Washington D.C. in 2010 when I testified before a subcommittee hearing for Buffalo Soldiers in the National Parks Study Act. Oh. It passed Congress and failed in the House. It passed Congress again in 2013, and now it's been sitting in Senate for over a year. Have you contacted our two senators here, Boxer and Feinstein? They authored the bill, so we okay. know we have their support. It's just been sitting in the subcommittee, and now it's time, what we're hoping well, with What does the bill thing. say? What, what, to do what? To, to study their trail, to make it a national historic trail, and perhaps signify areas along the trail that would be appropriate to place a national historic landmark. Stops along the way, you mean? Like in Fresno and Sanger and Los Banos and other places, the racetrack you saw a few minutes ago, which would right. really help tourism in our community. You know, it's right. local history, it's military history, state history, national history, and black history. Yeah. you got Bruce Rivers standing over there. He doesn't want to come on the program. So tell me the significance again of this and why this is so near and dear to your heart. I mean, you could have taken up any project the last seven years. Why this one? Why is this so important to you? 500 men have waited a hundred years for recognition that was due them, due totally to the time in which they served. Why is that served. so important to you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. My father died in Korea before I was born. Right. When I pass and his sisters pass, my father is forgotten. Right. And my father was just a soldier. He didn't do anything of importance. And these right. 500 men did so much for our country, and totally because of the years they served. They made sacrifices. They made sacrifices yeah. in a time, you know, Vietnam veterans, it's, they had a tough time when they came home. Imagine being an African American in the Army in those days. It was tough while they served, and it was tough when they got home. It's time they go to the front of the line. And Senate Bill 225 will do that. And the only way to get it passed is for folks like you and I to contact the senators and tell them, put your R's and your D's and your I's aside and put these men to the front of the line and recognize okay, just them. Just so we clarify too, so we don't confuse the, the general public on this Buffalo uh, Soldier thing. Um, Prior to 1899, the Buffalo Soldiers were all white? No, Buffalo Soldiers were a segregated unit as an act of Congress in 1866. So they, gotcha, gotcha. first okay. time they served in a peacetime army. Okay. So they made a segregated unit, and they were segregated in, you know, for many, many years until many they Many years. Um, but right. they did exist. They did exist. And they did fight the Indians, the Native Americans, they as did. we call them now. And these African Americans, these 500, I mean, should we erect a wall with all their names? Do you know all their names? I have a, I don't know them personally, but I have the muster rolls of all the soldiers, those 500 men. Maybe a wall should be erected with all 500 names on there, kind of like the Vietnam Wall, which That's you neat. probably saw uh, in, in D.C. when you went back there, the World yeah. War II Memorial, right. same kind of deal. Right. How about honoring them with a wall, a memorial That's a wall. neat idea. I it takes like money, but... It does, but you know, how about us? I'm happy to share that list of all these men so people can find out their, the people that came and stayed in there, which guy, sorry. How do they find out? what the names are. You go to your website? Go to the website, email. email. Which is what? The website is buffalosoldierday.org. Email okay. buffalosoldierday at gmail. I'm happy to email the muster roll. Did one of these guys fall in love with your town? Yeah. And so what kind of history do you have there in your town? There are people in Los Banos that still remember Jim Hall. Yeah. Hey, honor them with a memorial wall. 
kind of like the Vietnam War. Right. Um, our Circle K is, a new Circle K is coming in on that corner there where they camped, and yeah. they're considering putting a paying for a mural on the south wall of their building to depict this um, historic event of their staying amazing. with us. Amazing. Geneva, you're an amazing person. Thank you for coming on the program. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate it. And, and keep watching the show there on those I panels, will. will you? I will. Thanks. All right. Geneva Brad, the Buffalo Soldiers, tomorrow the 70, 70th anniversary of D-Day. We'll have a World War II veteran in here to talk about where he was on D-Day and about a year later when he fought the Battle of the Bulge. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. Ready, Bo? Let's go. Dr. Shields activated, Mr. Sulu. Automatic, sir. And we're pushing to the limit. The situation critical. Base of action. Can't break loose. Peace or utter destruction. It's up to you. Star Trek, Saturdays at 9, 8 central on MeTV. Brought to you by Ventura TV.